In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to add a model to a dish shape using the multiply combine mode. So for this tutorial, we're going to start off with a fresh new instance of vCarve Desktop. Now keeping in mind that everything we're going to show you here in this video, you can also do in vCarve Pro and Aspire. So we're going to create a brand new file. It's going to be a single sided job. The width of this is going to be 10. The height of it will be eight. And the thickness of our material is going to be around three quarters of an inch. Here we're using inches, of course. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface. For right now, while we're creating our layout, we're going to go ahead and set our XY datum to the center. When it comes to actually machining this, we may choose to move it to our bottom left hand corner. We're going to make sure we use a very high modeling resolution because there will be 3D content in this. And for our material, we're going to go and choose the Canadian maple option out of our list of materials. We just go ahead and click OK. Now for this tutorial, we're going to do most of our work right inside of the 3D view. So we're going to jump right over to that right away. And to start off, we're going to need a dish shape. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded all of my free clip art that comes along with my software from my VNCO account, and I've installed those. So if you look under my clip art tab, under the domes and dishes, we have a selection here of dishes. We have some that have flat bottoms, some that are fully round or fully shaped. We're just going to go ahead and choose this first one. We'll just double click on that, and that'll put it right in the center of our job. Now for this particular layout, I don't want a round dish shape. I want something that's more elliptical. So I am going to go in and change some sizes here. So I'm going to click on this bottom center handle, and that's going to adjust my height of my dish. And I'm going to change that to be 7. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to click on this handle here, and I'm going to change this other dimension to be 9. Press Enter. And then I want to go ahead and center that back in my job. So I can press F9 on my keyboard, or I can go over to my Design tab and choose to align it to the center of my job. And we'll close that down. Now if we go ahead and twiddle around this by holding down our right mouse button, you'll see that it's a raised dish, which isn't exactly what we want. We like to have it as a recessed dish. So we can select that component. We'll bring up our Floating Properties dialog. And we'll change this from a Merge component to a subtract component, and that'll turn that into a dish for us. And you'll see that's actually below the modeling plane here. So it's below the surface of our material. Let's close that down and look back at the top of our job. And we'll off click our component. Now, one of our top tips when it comes to machining something into a dish is to add in a zero plane. And this will help to minimize some of the machining complications that may happen around the edge of your dish. And to do that in vCarve Desktop or Pro, we have an option right here called Add a Plane Component with a zero height. If you have a spire, then all you need to do is just hold down your Shift key and click on Create a Flat Plane. So we're going to go ahead and add that in. Now, I'd like to point out a couple things about this zero plane is that if we look in our components tree, you'll see that it is visible. But if we go to our 2D view, it's not visible at all. It's actually hidden. We automatically hide the layer that we put the zero plane on. Sometimes it gets in the way of some of your components and your vectors. So we hide that away just for simplicity. But that's a good little thing to know. So let's go back to our 3D view again. Now, the next thing we want to do is to make sure that our dish is deep enough. So let's go ahead and select that. And we're going to look at our scale, our shape. And right now it's at 0.5273 of an inch. We want to actually change that to be 0.5 of an inch. We'll just press Enter. So if you remember correctly, our material is 0.75 of an inch thick. So this is going to leave us a little bit of material between the lowest part of this dish and the back of our material to thicken it up a bit. And that's perfect. Let's go ahead and off-click that now. Again, now that we have that all sorted out, we're going to need to actually get a model to put inside of our dish. So let's go over to our, over to our design tab. And we are going to go ahead and import in a 3D model. And if I navigate over to my tutorials folder, I'm going to see that I have a horsehead underscore model dot v3m. So I can select that and I can open that up. I should arrive right in the middle of my job. And that looks pretty good. So if I just off click that now, everything looks fine, except for when I rotate up on its edge, you'll notice that it's actually proud of my modeling plane. It's not sitting on the base of my dish. So what I need to do is I need to select that, go to my floating properties dialog again, and we're going to change this to be an add component. 
And now you'll see that it actually follows the base of my dish like it should. Let's look back down the top of that again. Now it looks pretty good. Um, I think though our horse's head could be a little bit bigger. So let's just go ahead and click on this corner scaling handle. If I select that, all I need to do is type in the width that I'd like to have and it will automatically scale the height in proportion because I clicked on that corner node. I'm gonna change this to be 7.75 and then press enter and you'll see that it'll size it up automatically for me. Now again, it's kind of off center now, so let's go back into our alignment tool and center that to the middle of my job. Then we can close that down. Now right away, you're gonna notice that there are some bright pink areas here, and there are some sort of hazy pink areas. That's because if we move this up on its edge, you'll note that the bright areas are actually proud of the modeling plane. They actually stick above the dish or above the surface of our material, which if we went ahead with it as it is right now and we cut this with traditional sort of tooling, then you would find that you'd probably have flat areas on his snout and also on the back of his neck, which isn't really what we'd like to do. So there's some different ways that we can go ahead and tackle this challenge. The first thing we could do is we could make the dish deeper which is pretty easy, but then we'd compromise the thickness of our material on the back, and that might not be the best decision. We could also go ahead and modify the shape height of the horse. That's another great option, except for we'd probably lose some detail on our horse, and that wouldn't be so great either. We could also go ahead and scale down the horse's head to fit better inside of the dish, but again, that would make it smaller, and we may compromise some of that detail. So what I'll do next, I'll walk you through our preferred method to make things fit nice and neatly into a dish without losing too much of the detail. So now you might ask yourself, why is this hazy in some areas and why is it not? Well, again, like I had mentioned before, that's because you can see the top of my material. I can also go ahead and hide my modeling plane if I'd like to. And that's really quite nice if you wanted to go ahead and take a screenshot to send off to a customer. That looks really good. But it's really quite helpful to have this modeling plane in there because, again, like I mentioned, you can actually see what bits are proud of the surface of your material. Okay? So let me go ahead and explain how we can use the multiply combine mode to fix this to retain most of the detail that we have in our horse. The first thing I'd like to do is to look over my model just to be sure that there isn't any little modifications I can make to it. Simple things like maybe adding a bit of a base height to define the edge of the component. Um, and in this case, you can see right here along the bottom of the horse's head that it's pretty close to the bottom of the dish. So to make this look a little bit better, to maybe give it a, bit, a little bit more of an object line when it cuts, then what I want to do is select the horse's head and I'm gonna add just a little bit of base height to this. So we're gonna add 0 0.05, and if I press enter, you'll see what happens. It's just gonna pop it up just a little bit from the back. That way, as my tool comes in, it'll have to step up a little bit, and it'll give me a little bit of definition right there, and that'll add a lot to the model in the end. That looks good, perfect. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at our component tree. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can go over to our component tab over here if we'd like to, or we can use our drop down component tree up here. So right now you'll see that as we were building up this composition, everything's landed on one level, but we're gonna complicate it by adding in this multiply idea. So we're gonna need to sort this out a little bit. So first of all, let's rename this level that we currently have by selecting it. And we're gonna go ahead and choose rename level out of the right click menu. And we're gonna call this models in dish. So anything that we want to have in the dish, we're going to put on that level. We're going to right click on this and we're going to go ahead and insert a new level. And this one we're going to call multiply. So we're just going to go ahead and rename that. We're going to call it multi. Okay. And then we're going to add one more level and we're going to call this one dish shape. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zero plane and holding down my control key, I'm gonna select the dome. Okay, I'm just gonna let go of the control key and I'm just gonna drag these up into the dish shape level. Nothing has changed at all. We've just kind of organized this a bit better. 
Now let's go ahead and choose our multiply level. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of what we see in the dish shapes level into the multiply level. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down my control key again and select both of those. I'm going to keep my control key down so when I drag it, I'll actually make a copy into my multiply level. And we're going to hide the dish shapes for right now. Okay. And we're going to hide our models in dish. So with our multiply level, let me just talk a little bit about that. So like any of our combined modes, we're going to use a mathematical formula behind the scenes to judge or to decide how different components should interact with each other. So we've got five different combined modes. There's add, subtract, merge high, merge low, and multiply. Let's look at add for a second. So add's a pretty easy one. The software will look at the component tree and add the corresponding pixels height to each other. And that's going to look like a component has been added on top of another component. In our case, this time around, we're going to be using a multiply level. So the result of whatever's on that level, we're going to be using that as a multiplier. So any pixels that land below that, we multiply by the corresponding number on our multiply level. So if we have a zero pixel height on our multiply level, and we have a pixel below that of 10, then 10 times zero is zero, so it'll be nothing. Whereas if we have a pixel height of one on our multiply level, and it's multiplied by the 10, then it will equal 10 in the end. And everything in the middle will taper itself down. So we're going to do that with these, this dish and this zero plane. So if we select the dish, we're going to go ahead and change the combined mode of that to be add. And we need to scale this shape to be one. Okay, so we're going to go here to our scale shape. And we're just going to make that one and press enter. Okay. There we go. So let's close this down now. And let's look back down the top of this. And we're going to drop down our component tree or our level manager. We're going to right click on the multiply and we're going to change this combine load to multiply. If we go ahead and add in our horse, and we go ahead and turn some of this edge, which is easier to see. If we go ahead and bring back that up, and we go ahead and hide our multiply level, you'll see what happens if we show it. So the highest pixels aren't changing at all because they're being multiplied by one, where the pixels that are lower are being multiplied by the number of the height under that dish. And so you get this nice sort of tapered look. So again, let's just go ahead and roll this around and look down the top of our model. Now, if we go ahead and turn back on our dish shape, you'll see what happens now. That gets put perfectly inside of our dish shape and everything looks really good, retaining most of the detail that we have. And that looks quite nice. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that in order for this to work correctly, your multiply dish needs to be the exact same shape but a positive version of the dish that's going to be you're going to use to actually recess your model into your material. So that's really important to remember. Okay. Now, one thing that's nice about this is because we add, have that zero plane in here, this modeling plane in here, these pixels are at zero. So if I grab my horse's head by right clicking on it and choosing the horse head, I can go ahead and move this outside of my dish. You'll see what happens as it moves outside of my dish, it actually goes away because it's being multiplied down to zero. So I can go ahead and scale this down if I want to. Go ahead and slide a little further over like this. I can also hold down my control key and I can copy that horse. And I could go ahead and flip it horizontally by pressing H on my keyboard. And now I can put two horses in my dish. Need to size them down a little bit. So I can create a really neat composite model with the horses. Now also what I can do is I can turn this up on its edge and if I want to I can go ahead and adjust my shape height of those components until they peak outside of that modeling plane. You see how it's changing color? I can just go ahead and tuck that down in there and same with this one over here. And that'll allow me to make sure that I get the most amount of detail I can in my part.
And there we go. And I hope that you can see how powerful using that multiply feature is, especially when you're trying to put things into a dish.